everyone and welcome to the video. I was going away this weekend and I thought that I would, this is our, my father in case y'all don't know. I always put it in my thumbnails for him. But um, I'm going away for the weekend and I've been working on this big project of harvesting images. And this is a magazine, Baker's, Baker's Creek is what it is. And it has really good thick paper. I almost thought about making this into an altered magazine, but I decided I liked the images better. So I've just been doing the images and I've actually been sorting them sort of in a little different way than I normally do. I've got like tiny images here. And then these are some things, some little bins I got at Dollar Tree that are square and this is the elongated version of this. I believe two of these will fit in, in one of these. And then more of my medium images. And over here where you cannot see, <laughs> it's like my larger images. But with this, most of them are going to fit in, in one of these bins. So I've been, I've been trying to decide how I want to store and sort my images. And especially like my background images, because any kind of thing that's like this can get really crazy when you're working with it, because uh, there's just so much fodder. So of course it's not going to fit here. It is not going to fit here. So I guess I'll put it there if it's there. You can't hardly see it on camera, but I'm sorry. Um, I've just been kind of flipping back and forth to see which ones I like more because these are just going to mainly be background. And then I think for my next video, oops, I'm just going to take a, a magazine and we're going to start to, I'll start to show you how I build my pages and we'll just pick a magazine too big, just right to show you how I do it. There's not really a lot of words. I like the purple on this. So I'm going to take this one. Um, there's not really a lot of words that I'm going to save out of this, so it's mainly just images. Uh, yeah, that fits pretty good. Oh, I tore it crookedly. See? Oh, I'll fix that when I use it. Oh, little Tom Thumb, isn't he cute? The bad thing about me going through these garden magazines is that I'm an avid gardener, so... I just want to make, want to buy all these seeds. But this is from, I believe, several years ago. That is a little big for that, so we'll move it here. And this is just my trash, and I always look on the back to see if there's anything I want to keep. And what of these do I want to keep? Um, I think I like this. Has everybody been doing well? Keeping safe from the coronavirus that everybody has decided that we need tons of toilet paper for. Um, yeah, don't don't panic, guys. This is the thing. Most of us are not going to get very sick from it anyways. And if you do get sick from it and die. We all have to die someday. <laughs> That's the way I'm looking at it. None of us get out of this life alive. So just take your precautions, but don't panic. There's just, there's no need, absolutely a no need to panic. I don't, I just don't understand the mass hysteria of, oh, look at that pepper. My husband would just, mm, mm, mm. Those are pretty. That's pretty. Jigsaw pepper. That's interesting. I have, I grow a pepper that looks a lot like this that has little, little bitty tiny peppers on them and they're hot, but they, they don't last long. Um, the heat of them don't last long, I should say, and I can even grow it indoors, but it looks a lot like that. Hmm. It doesn't show the peppers. Short, stocky plants, small, plum colored fruit about the size of a, about as spicy as a jalapeno. Yeah, that's what it, mine looks like. I never knew the name of it, though. I got it, like, at a farmer's market. So, I really like the colorful images of these. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is decide what colors I like best. I like that one and I like this one. And I'm holding it up to the light so that I can see like where it falls. Like I can see that, like I can see the outline of this image from looking through it on this side. <laughs> I know that's hard to show you on camera, but I try to show you my process because a lot of people get so scared by art and they watch all these videos from like Dee Dee and Shannon Green and they see these beautiful things that they create and they're like, oh, I can't, I, there's no way that I can do that. And that's one of the reasons I started my channel because I'm definitely no Dee Dee. <laughs> I am not an artist. I cannot draw a lick. I have tried. I have done the uh, drawing on the right side of the brain and I can do it to somewhat, but honestly, I don't have the patience. I do not have the patience to draw. I just want it done. I want it done quickly. So I found that this is my style of art. This is what I like to do. I like to find images. I like to combine colors together. I like to take trash and make it into different kinds of trash. <laughs> That's funny. I crack myself up. So yeah, this is what I like to do. I just like to make my little books and just make something new out of something old and just be creative and slap and slap um, some color on a page. I like to slap paint around. I, I like to be surprised by my own art. It, it, maybe that's good. Maybe it's not. I don't know, but I, I enjoy the process of just putting random things down and then going, wow, that looks really good. It's I art for myself, for no one else but myself. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's my motto. I believe it's important that you be creative. I, I like to say every day, but I know that that's not possible. But be be as creative as, possi as possible as uh, much as possible, I guess, is what I'll say. I believe it's important to your life to be creative. I think it helps you to access those parts of your brain that are image-based. A lot of people call that the right side of the brain. Some people debunk that. I, I tend to believe it is the right side of your brain and that you should absolutely tap into that portion of your brain because it's important. It's very important in problem solving. I do problem solving for a living. I'm a computer programmer. Uh, people are amazed at how quickly that I can come up with a solution and then code that solution. And I tell you, it's a hundred percent because I do stuff like this and tap into a side of my brain that most people don't use. Um, there's no words. There's no words there. That's what I say. I do it through dance and I do it through my art. Uh, it's interesting when dance because when me and my girls are dancing and I clog if you don't know, but when we're practicing and I'll start and we're, we're like, doing a dance and I start to call it and I'll say like five, six, seven, eight. And then I'll start by maybe saying the step names. But by the end, I'm not saying any words. It's the rhythm. So I start end up, <laughs> they laugh at me because of it, because I'll say like Charleston and then I'll be going to dun, to dun, to dee, dee, da, ba, bump, ba, dee, ba, dee, dee, da, because that's, I don't hear words in my brain when I dance. What and it's hard for me to dance, and at the same time call out uh, the moves because there's no language, there's no words from the part of the brain in which I dance. There's just that rhythm, and it's the only way that I can even vocalize it. And for the longest time, I didn't even realize I was doing that. And they were like, "Tracy, call out." 
the steps, <laughs> the steps, Tracy, the steps. And I, I couldn't, I just, I tried, but I, I just couldn't do it. I could not dance and do it at the same time. This is such a pretty book. Look at that. I don't know how boring you guys think this is. I know that there's been a few requests for me to do some things. I just simply don't have time to do it today because I am uh, leaving for the weekend uh, to go to some clogging workshops. But I did have about 30 minutes that I could spend um, with you guys. And I thought that I would. And I thought this is what this was the project that I was working on so rather than trying to just pull out something for you guys I figured I would just let you in on my process we might do a couple of little flip throughs or I might glue a couple of things down for you guys just so that it isn't so flipping boring but I know that a lot of you probably watch just to be inspired while you too work yourself I know that I do. I love putting on a, a long video like Dee Dee's. I love her live streams and I love that she records her live streams and I just put them on and then while she works, I work and I kind of have company and then a lot of times I'll be inspired by something that she did or it'll give me an idea. Usually what it does, it enables me to buy something, which I shouldn't. <laughs> and I've been actually trying not to spend money like on books and stuff lately because I'm trying to de-stash my hoard, not add to it. So I have not been watching Dee Dee lately. So I hope she's doing well. I have seen a couple of her videos uh, pop up in my feed and I, and I admire her work, but actually watching the video, no, I have not. Because I just, I can't. I just can't right now. There's too much coming up. I've got too many competitions. And I just had to buy a new uh, competition outfit. And I need to get some new hose. And I bought some fake eyelashes. Girls, if you like fake eyelashes, um, those magnetic ones that have the two that just click together. Instead of like the eyeliner. Yes, that's the way to go. I like those. The The hardest thing is putting them on. And what I do is I take the bottom lash and I line it up exactly where I want it on the bottom of my lash. And then I close my eyes. And then I lay that top one over it. And it works pretty well. Sometimes it takes me three or four times to get it lined up correctly. Now, I did just invest in a new uh, eyelash thing that I don't like the ones that come with the lashes but there's one that looks like an eyelash cor cor curler and I got that um, I've got one that's coming but it's coming from China so it, God knows if I'll ever get it but when I was at Walgreens the other day there was a brand Kiss that had that type of thing without the like the thumb loops and it was more like tweezers but it had the straight bars rather than like the curb you'd know if you saw the the magnetic lashes but anyway um i'm eager to try that because i haven't tried it but i have a show tomorrow night in which we are dancing to the love boat and i'm going to try those lashes for that eyelash applier, I guess I should say, for the first time then. So yeah, by my next video, that's too big for that, I don't like it. Uh, by my next video, we'll check it out. I'm sorry I keep scratching. Um, I just got out of the shower and I just scratch, I just scratch, I just itch so badly when I get out of the shower. I can't stand it. And the only thing the doctors have ever told me is like, well, you just have dry skin. So as your as the water evaporates off your skin or whatever, it just irritates your skin and you itch. So I've tried everything. I've tried put on putting on lotion right after I get out of the shower. It doesn't help. I've tried coconut oil in the shower, doesn't help. 
I just have to put up with it for a few minutes. Which one do I like better? Let's do the orange. We all have things in this life that we have to put up with. And if itching after a shower is mine, then I am truly blessed. So I need to go to the store and get some toilet paper. And honestly, I dread it because I'm afraid they're going to be out. <laughs> and then I'm going to have to run around the city to look for freaking toilet paper. What is up with folks? I mean, do they think we're going to be quarantined to our houses for months? I do have a friend in Italy who is quarantined to her house. But I mean, still, even in Italy... Uh, pharmacies, hospitals, and grocery stores are open. So, I, I just don't know. I just don't know what to believe. I think a lot of what's going on is the media trying to create a mass panic. And I've lost a lot of faith in the media recently. I've been listening to a podcast I believe it's called Hunt, Catch, Kill. It's by Ronan Farrell. If you look up Ronan Farrell podcast, I'm sure you can find it. And he wrote a book of, of the same name. And it first starts off talking about Harvey Weinstein and about how all these allegations first started coming out. And Ronan had worked for a TV station. I will not name the network. But he worked for this network, and he had a lady who had been violated by Harvey. And he had a story, and the network would not run it. And come to find out, Harvey Weinstein himself squashed the story and had an agreement with the network that they would never run a story on him. So Oppen, oh, I say I say Oppenheimer. You will probably know what network it is, but so be it. Oppenheimer was the one who quashed the story, um, and he's still there. And I think that's awful. But they did find out that yes, this did happen. Um, Harvey did did send money and other things to have the story die. So yeah. And then he goes on to talk about, and I'm just now getting into this portion of the podcast, but the, the, I think it's called hunt, catch, kill. That was a term that was actually, um, put together by Donald Trump before he became president. And it was when he was affiliated with several news outlets like like uh, the National Enquirer. And there was a few others that I don't remember. But that, that was the, the phrase that he would use. That there was an unfavorable story that they were going to post on him. They would find it and then they would kill it so that it wouldn't be published. Um, I know that there's a story that he had a love child with, I believe it was a nanny of his, and he ended up appeasing her by making her, um, giving her a position at the Trump Hotel, and it came out there. This guy sold that story to the National Enquirer. The National Enquirer ended up spending like $6,000 for the story. This was, this was, bef I think this was before he became president. And, um, the, they were going to run the story and then all of a sudden, boom, the story was killed. And that's when they started to find out that, yes, he was controlling the media in a lot of ways. The media is so different now than what it was when I was growing up, or at least the way I see it. I mean, this could have been going on forever for all I know, but I can just tell you that things are so much more corrupt than you guys think. Well, I'm not going to say you guys, but most people think. The more that I find out about things, the more that I am amazed. And then I just have to remember we live in a, in a fallen world 
and then it doesn't amaze me anymore. <laughs> you know, the thing that, that gripes me a lot is when people are like, oh, the United States, well, they, it was, it was uh, born of Christian values, and we need to get back to that. And then you go and you look at Washington, D.C., and if you know anything about occult symbols, it, everything is, is so occulty from the Washington Monument to the to the way that it's laid out. I mean, even our money with the pyramid and the all seen eye. I mean, it's just crazy. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how this was really founded on Christian, Christian principles. I would like to believe that. I'd like to believe this is a Christian country, but God also tells us that, um, that, uh, Satan is the prince of this world. And yes, I'm a Christian. These are my beliefs. And I'm holding you captive to my beliefs. You are my audience. <laughs> so anyways, I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me rip these pages apart because there is so much to every page. But uh, I believe I got this catalog for free. It's Baker's Creek. You just have to go on their website and request a catalog. I do try to buy seeds and stuff from them. I don't just get the catalog and uh, not buy things because I want them, you know, they have to incur a cost to send me these things. And if it's a catalog that I don't, I request catalogs. And then if it's one that I don't find useful in my art, then I don't buy from that because I want them to stop sending me catalogs. But if it's somebody that I enjoy, like this, these pages are so thick and so dreamy and these images are so amazing i mean i could reverse collage this page like crazy but just all these images are just so beautiful and most of them don't have a lot of words like on the image itself like this this does you know, a lot of times you'll see it, see catalogs, and it'll have like A and B and stuff in the photo. And those are kind of hard to use because you really don't want those. But these have very few where there's actually text. And with the photos, they're just beautiful, beautiful photos. Marshmallow's a beautiful plant. It's how oh, I love marshmallow. I have a mal I have a mallow. It's a Xenia Mallow. Oh, my word. It's so beautiful. So beautiful. I love plants. Coneflowers. So pretty. I just, I just love, love plants. So, yeah. Tomatoes. There's so many tom tomatoes. One of my favorite is, um, uh, this is black brandy one. I like Cherokee. Purple Cherokee, here it is. Oh, my word. Purple Cherokee is such a good tomato, and it's huge, and it's juicy. Oh, my word. It's so good. One of my favorites. They look ugly as sin most of the time. This is a real pretty one, but most of the time they look like crap, but let me tell you, they taste wonderful. <laughs> they get really deformed on the vine and everything else, but yeah. I don't know that I'm going to grow any melons this year. I think I want to grow some one melon. I have a place, but I just don't know. Maybe I'll do a butternut squash there. I like butternut squash. Zucchini, oh Lord. <laughs> if, you ever, if you ever grow zucchini, do not get too many plants. Because if you have one, you can feed like a family of a hundred, I swear. We had three zucchini plants one year and I, I mean we ate zucchini until it was coming out of our ears i looked up all kinds of zucchini recipes and then i gave it away to all my friends i gave it away to neighbors to the point that one of my neighbors was like oh my god please do not bring me any more zucchini that is a beautiful beautiful photo so pretty 
Wow. I'm sorry, radishes. I love radishes. I never have good luck of growing radishes. They'll grow, but then when I harvest them, they just shrivel up and die, and I don't know what I've, what I've done wrong. I hate that because I think there's some radishes that are just beautiful. So, yeah, let me see what I can uh, show you that's near me. Um... This is something I've been working on, and I, I think I have probably shown you this guy, this before, but it really shows a lot of my style. I've gone to the habit where I don't do the front so that I can know exactly what magazine it was or um, whatever. This is the local savings. Coupons, coupons, coupons. It's one of those free magazines you get like at the grocery store, they usually have a rack that has like apartment books or different things. And uh, that's what this is. It was just one I hadn't seen before. So I grabbed it to see what it would do. It's just a small, just a small little book. So I didn't have to worry about it getting too chunky. When you have staples, I don't know if you can see it. There's a staple. When you have a thing that's stapled, it's harder to, I don't want to say harder. You have to be careful that it doesn't get too junky. So if it's really, really fat, like, I don't know, I don't have one close by. But if you have something that's really, really fat and stapled, then you have to be careful because it could get too chunky and come out of the staples. But I mean, this was just tiny. So um, this was just one I did real quick. Mainly all I did was uh, glue down a bunch of just random images. And this one really isn't finished because I usually add like a person or some words. I just love this image. I don't even remember where it came from. But um, this came from an art catalog. These are just palette knives. And we got like a cat, um, some sideways stairs. <laughs> and then this is a tree. See, it's a tree pointing that way and some daisies. And I just stuck it all on the page. And then I just painted black around everything. And then these are like some stamps. You've got some rainbow stamps. Um, this is a flower stamp I made myself. I think I made that myself. Yeah, I definitely did. I um, just actually put on this is some lip gloss that I got from Dollar Tree it's shiny you can't see the glitter on it but um, it's like coconut on the inside but it's real shimmery and so this is kind of sticky but I mean I really don't care but it just adds a little shimmer to the page I just kind of looks better on the black I'm just kind of like that. I mean, it's going to stay sticky, but I mean, I don't care. My art is never going to be shown in the lube. My kids are not going to care a hill of beans about these books. They ju they're just not going to care. So if it doesn't last a year, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So I think this is like makeup strips. My big old rooster here that I cut out. Uh, this is from art mag an art catalog showing different pastels. This came from an old Roman book about Rome. And I just cut, I think these were individual and this was one page. So then I just put some black around it to break it up and just did a couple of stamps on there just to kind of jazz it up a bit. Um, I'll rip the page a little bit there. Again, just random images. I'm trying to see if any of these are actually on the book itself. This may be. I had to get a drink, sorry. But yeah, I just glued different things on, smeared around some paint. This is a vinyl sticker. From Dollar Tree. You know those, if you go over there, the wall art, that's what this is. 
and just stuck it on there. Same here, same pack. Um, this is my state. Go Tennessee. Love Tennessee. That's where I'm from. In case you didn't know, this is a Tennessee accent. I live here in East Tennessee. <laughs> I am a hillbilly. I love autumn colors and autumn, so I threw some of that in there. Uh, this is my favorite tree. This is a mimosa tree. It is highly invasive here in the south, but I love it anyways. It's my favorite. I love this tree. Um, I believe that these came out of a catalog. I'm not sure. And I think this came out of invasive, spe invasive species you should never plant. And see here, I didn't actually put in any black right there. I probably should have, but you know, whatever. To each their own. We got a snake with some crystals hanging out. So yeah. We got an upside down Japanese building. But if I have a person here or whatever, you're, you're not going to be able to tell. Um, I think these... These came out of an art catalog that had like samples of people's art. I love this. I think it's beautiful. I don't I don't remember where it came from. It might have been out of that art magazine. This is back to that Rome thing. This is the Rome thing. This is from an IKEA magazine, I believe. And then I try to put a stamp in the middle and I missed the middle, but hey, it's all right. Feather stamp that I made myself. And then these probably came from uh, Tennessee Gardener magazine. Another little Roman image that happened to be there. And then I did the back just because. So, yeah. Quick little flip through. Um, my hand's stuck. So, it's been 30 minutes. I'm going to have to jump off here and go get ready because my husband will be here soon to whisk me away to Gatlinburg where I will have fun clogging. And until next time, go out and be creative. Bye.